In this video, we're gonna to go to jazz piano school. Hey, it's Paul Toby here from jazzmental.com. Thanks for joining me for another one of my tutorials. I think it's a good idea for you to get some feedback on your playing every once in a while. Kind of lets you know where you're at and where you should go next and what you should work on. And I think that's one of the most important aspects of like a jazz piano school, whether that's with a single teacher or multiple teachers. Their job is to provide you some information that can benefit you to progress you to the next level. So what we're gonna do in this video is I researched some players on the Jazz Pianist group on Facebook and I listened to their performances and I took little snippets from those videos and I'm gonna play them for you. I'm not gonna show you who their faces are. I'm not gonna tell you who their names are. They're just random selections from the Facebook group. I'm gonna play them and then I'm gonna give some constructive feedback based on some of the things that I hear and then maybe play some examples of what they might try to move to next in terms of their current abilities. And there are four different players, so their playing is quite different. So the feedback that I'm gonna generate for each of them is probably gonna be a little bit different. You and I are gonna to get to hear them together and then I'll talk a little bit about the performance and then I'll move on to the next one. Let's listen to number one. So the first thing you might hear is they got a little bit lost, I think, near the end of that. So this is probably a sort of in, in between beginner and intermediate type player. They do have a current grasp on chords and things, but those chords that they're playing are pretty rudimentary. So for them, I would suggest understanding good jazz chord progression, understanding how upper structure triads are built, how chords fit together, how the inner voices work. That's pretty much the next step for this person. I think rhythm can come a bit later, even though there was a complete, I think, lack of, of rhythm in that particular performance. It's more like a rubato performance. But I think even when you're doing that, there should be some rhythm involved. So again, the first thing I would do is take a look at the chord structures and, and try to get a little more complex and move towards jazz chord structures versus straight triads, things like this. So again, really thinking about the chords that you're playing and the way those chords fit together. You might've heard some tritone substitutions in there, a little bit of swing here and there in amongst all the rubato. All right, I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the next player. Okay, there's some nice things in there. They're playing Misty, obviously. The feedback that I would have for this person is when you're playing stride in a solo piano situation, you wanna keep that rhythm going, which I think she did an admirable job of. The only challenge that I had with it is it kind of swings backwards. And what I mean by that is the accents are typically in the wrong place. That's because the next step for this person should be learning a little bit more of the jazz language in terms of soloing. So what the right hand is doing, it's not just playing random notes, random 
chords like arpeggios and things like that like she did. It's more like lines that fit together that make sense in a harmonic and rhythmic context at the same time. And of course, the left hand is going to help out with that. What, what she should do with the left hand is more rootless voicings that are more jazz. For example, she's just kind of playing stride like this. And again, it's really hard to sound very much like jazz when you're doing things like that. It should swing, but at the same time, give yourself enough space to make the left hand accentuate what the right hand's doing. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that all together correctly, but he here's an example. So you can see that the left hand's not just going like this. It's doing other things like this. It's moving back and forth between different patterns and sometimes playing two rootless voicings and then going down and playing the bass and not just playing the bass note, but also encircling that bass note with passing note. So that's what I would work on. I would work on, again, those left hand chordless voicings and then think about a little bit more of the bebop language in the right hand because it really is not just arpeggios like this. You can hear it kind of swinging backwards. That's what's going to happen if you don't understand the right hand uh, language of bebop, like this. So again, the important lesson there is that right hand understanding a little bit more of the bebop language and keeping phrasing going versus just arpeggios and random notes in the right hand. That's not really soloing when you're doing things like that. All right, let's move on to the next player and give it a listen. Right, so there was two distinctive styles in that performance. There was the Liberace style, which you may have caught. That's all the flurry of notes, the big arpeggios, both one-handed and two-handed, going up and coming down. And then he got into stride piano, which is that plunking down a left-hand bass note and then playing a chord next, like. It's not really my style of playing, and it's certainly not jazz. So. The recommendation that I would have for this particular player is to think a little bit more about what jazz actually is and the language of jazz, because that was really 
a classical performance. Yeah, it might have had a little bit of swing to it, but it was kind of a backward swing. The accents were not on the backbeat. So it's very much a classical performance. And of course, you've got that Liberace thing going on. And you know, that gets boring really, really quickly. Because as soon as you do it once, it's kind of like, well, what else you got? Because if you keep doing that over and over again, which really was the case here, it, it tends to not be as impressive as the first time that you did it. So sporadically throw that in there. But again, it's not really a jazz language because even the arpeggios that were played were not complex. They were basically based on triads. And again, we have this same critique for the first player. You need to understand a little bit more about modern harmonic progression, especially jazz progression, because it's more complex than just triads and the odd seventh thrown in there. So if it were me and I were doing autumn leaves, I would think about an introduction that might be classical in nature, but moves eventually into jazz. But as you're playing that sort of classical style, think about some rich chords thrown in there just to kind of conk the listener over the head. Let me give you an example of what I mean. And again, that's, a, that's a, a jazz chord thrown into what so far is a basically classical performance. And you can clearly hear the melody, which is really important. And then once that head is done, I would slowly get into swing, slowly get into that. What he did was a stride piano, but I would move into swing more like this. Right, so moving from rubato into swing versus this sort of flowery Liberace thing into stride piano, which is kind of like swinging backwards. It's a more classical approach to jazz. All right, so there's one more example from this same piano player that I wanted to play for you that should absolutely be fixed as soon as possible because it's not a walking bass line that they're playing. He thinks he's playing a walking bass line because he's playing a quarter note on each of the beats but he's basically spelling the chords, which doesn't really swing that well. So let's listen to it. So that's like a really good example of a couple of things. One, playing random melodies in the right hand, which have nothing to do with the jazz language, and at the same time playing a left hand bass line, which has nothing to do with jazz language. So for example, what he's doing is he's playing a quarter note 
on each of the beats, but he's arpeggiating them like this. So he's playing like one, three, five, and seven. It's hard for me to even think that way, let alone do it. But yeah, it's, it's again, just playing a quarter note on each of the beats, but just playing the, the chord with the left hand. So a walking bass line, and I'm gonna show this in the next player as well, who's doing more of a walking bass line, but it still needs work. So I think the idea with a walking bass line is to not just play quarter notes, but also play the scale rather than just the arpeggios. So for example, So that's just a quick example of a bass line that I would put together just off the cuff. If you want more examples on how to play good bass lines, I'm gonna put a link to a video up here in the corner that we have that talks specifically about the different types of walking bass lines that you can play to make them more swing. So like I mentioned, the last player also plays Autumn Leaves, very different style, but he's also walking a bass line and that's the thing that I want you to listen for. Listen to the way that, that he walks a bass line in this particular performance. I actually liked the switch to 3-4 jazz waltz there in the end where he transitioned. I thought that was pretty cool. But when you're playing jazz waltz, and we'll leave this for another video, it's a very different style than he played. So really the goal in all of this is to kind of lead you down the path of becoming a better jazz pianist. This is not about becoming a better piano player. It's about adhering to the language of jazz and sounding more like a jazz player over time and, and progressing forward from where you are now. So this particular player does a jazz bass line. I think it was in uh, E minor. So he's like. Even the way that I'm playing it there, it swung a little bit more, but a bass line is not that. It is a combination of things like that, swinging on the proper accents, which is two and four, and finding a mix of different things to play. So again, it's not just about playing straight quarter notes in the left hand, it's about finding different rhythms to play, accenting where the right hand is not, and just staying within the jazz language in terms of the chord progressions. So if your playing is anything like the piano players that I shared here today and the examples that I've given, then I hope you got some 
good advice and constructive feedback on what you should be working on and where you should go next with your playing. So the thing that we really work on here at Jazz Mental is helping you be a better player and it's always good to get some constructive feedback on where you're at. So what should you do next? If there's something new that you're looking to do, I suggest you go check out this video.